Hey everybody, so today we are going to be talking about FAIR data principles, specifically in life sciences, but this has a large application across different disciplines. And especially if you are in data science, ontology, or knowledge graph, this is absolutely something that you should be aware of. So if this is something that is new to you, or maybe you are a veteran, you will probably still enjoy this video because I am joined by a special guest who has over a decade of experience working in FAIR data principles, for the life sciences. And also, this is the first video I'm going to be publishing two times. So for those that know, I did a poll on LinkedIn asking if a longer form podcast version was of interest. Came out 50-50. So what I'm going to do is anytime I have a special guest on the channel, I'm going to post the shorter form version, which is under 20 minutes on LinkedIn and YouTube the longer form version that is going to be more of a behind the scenes because there's less editing involved and you're gonna hear a lot more from the guest and myself, that's going to be the longer form version that I'm only going to post on YouTube. Just so you don't get a lot of weird emails if you are getting notifications, I'm going to be posting these at the exact same time and I'm going to put it in the title so you know which one is which. And depending on which version you're watching right now, if it says podcast in the title, this is the longer form version. If you are more interested in the short form, link up above as well as down below. If you are looking for the podcast version, make sure that, again, I'm going to put a link down below and I'm going to put a link up above right now for the longer form podcast if you are more interested in that. All right, so with that, let's go get started. So today we are here to talk about something that is incredibly important. You've probably heard this from many consultancies if you're talking about data projects, and that is FAIR. So today we are here with Nick. So Nick, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, and yeah, thanks very much for uh, inviting me to your uh, your channel today. Yeah, I'm, I'm Nick Lynch. I'm based in the UK. Uh, I used to work for a number of pharma and biotech num companies. Uh, including AstraZeneca. And now we run a small uh, consulting company called Curly Research. And we're lucky to be involved and working with lots of uh, great groups across the globe who are uh, working on data, uh, particularly in life science across its uh, sort of from the beginning of, of early target discovery through to later clinical and, and onwards. And, and FAIR data, which I can explain in a minute, our data is really, you know, the key buzzword that I think is is impacting yeah. our whole industry. Yeah. And, and and as a sort of brief intro to FAIR is that it, it stands for findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. And, and it's been around or with us as an acronym. It's quite a nice acronym, I suppose. And it, mm -hmm. it certainly gathered uh, interest from from sort of management as well in that it's been with us for about six or seven years from some early work from a number of people, particularly in, in academia yep. and interested in publishing data too, because, mm -hmm. you know, I think many of the the standards that come around data come from how people want to disseminate uh, research data. But yeah. the purpose of FAIR is about making, as it says in its sort of in the abbreviation, the process of making that data useful because i think in you know it, it yeah. all through r d and through the centuries that we've been doing r d in in life science we collect data and obviously that data was you know with back to you know 300 400 years ago it was handwritten in inscribed <laughs> we've obviously evolved uh, uh f from that but only until about 20, you know, 15 years ago was the concept of sort of more electronic capture of data, sort of the, you know, the norm in the sense of the notebook that people mm -hmm. use mm -hmm. to, to, to capture data. And so electronic notebooks were, were only really sort of being introduced to our industry in the sort of mid 2000s, at least mm -hmm. in, in the mainstream. Mm -hmm. And that sort of note taking part of our work you know, very much needs is really important because it's the beginning of the experiment and mm -hmm. it's all about, you know, the, the sort of the, the design test, sorry, the design, make, test, analyze sort of the cycle that can, can be applied to all sciences where you you design what you, you want to do, you, you, you try and you make it or you carry out the experiment, mm -hmm. you validate uh, what you're wanting to do and then you start again or you analyze the broader corpus of data uh, that you have access to. 
you can have large volumes, but it's very dense and, yeah. and it's just for one experiment. Yep. You can equally have the complete opposite, which is a, a large cross section of data, mm -hmm. but quite thin. Mm -hmm. And and for both of those sort of data types or or or, or sort of uh, sort of volume cubes, mm -hmm. the the importance of fair is critical because having mm -hmm. cr you know created the data so that yeah. in a way the findable part you can break down fair into sort of these th there are three main parts and in a way the reusable bit is about then the sort of the later use which we can cover later so the findable mm -hmm. is about giving something uh, an identifier so that's mm -hmm. so in, in terms of the basics you know we we have as individuals probably have our identifiers in our social security system mm -hmm. or our governmental mm -hmm. system and the same applies to assets that we create in life science you, you make a new molecule and it'll get an id a, a protein has an id from say a, a, a registered system a registered system like uniprot and, and a mm -hmm. gene will have a name and hopefully an id mm -hmm. but i but i i but the the point of these identifiers for fair is that they're persistent so a, a persistent url or uri mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. critical to obviously not name the set sorry two different things mm -hmm. with, with the same identifier absolutely and you know nick one thing that you know FAIR is by itself a very important thing to be talking about. But from my perspective and what a lot of people on this channel know about is knowledge graphs, which also use a lot of the same themes that you're talking about, like UIDs. So, you know, imagine you're using that new molecule that you have designed and it has a UID, but you want to now put it into a different experiment than its home experiment. And so being able to use that same ID across the different experiments allows you to then be able to tie them all in together, which is not, you know, that is a very basic, you know, when you're trying to understand the ripple effect of things that you're doing in experiments, maybe a knowledge graph would be helpful for that. But there are so many other use cases that using FAIR and its principles and Knowledge Graph and its principles, they make this beautiful little baby that's going to help so many people understand how things are interconnected and what things worked and what things didn't. So this is a big reason I'm I'm a big uh, supporter of this as well. Yeah, absolutely. And so with, with that sort of the fundamental principle of giving something an identifier, I mean, it sounds simple. In a way, it's quite hard to do universally. <laughs> Truly unique IDs are, are difficult, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so you can, and I think this is, again, it, one can think of sort of uh, onion rings or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, sort of concentric circles mm -hmm. coming out that within our, our own, let's say we're working in one organization, managing identifiers is one sort of job. It's more manageable when you start to then as you mm -hmm. said work between organizations mm -hmm. and this is again is another a, a sort of reason for this being ever more important is the nature of life science it now means that there's no one company that does mm -hmm. everything you know yeah. we're before maybe 20 years ago that the larger farmer had a more was done within them because mm -hmm. they were bigger and it was the nature of, of how they worked. But now innovation is happening in so many different places, just like in other industries, but particularly in life science, where you've yeah. got, yes, the existing larger pharma like AstraZeneca, Novartis, Roche, mm -hmm. et cetera. But there's a huge long tail of uh, emerging biotechs, yes. research collaborate uh, organizations, perhaps funded by philanthropic methods mm -hmm. like Bill and Melinda Gates and Chan mm -hmm. Zuckerberg. You've got large charitable groups like Cancer Research UK here, mm -hmm. obviously NIH funding of, yeah. of many things and other countries too. And then, you know, other things in between, you know, large sort of pan uh, country uh, groups fund research like uh, one of in Europe, we have something called IHI, which is Innovative Health Initiative. It used to be called IMI. Uh, mm -hmm. So they did a lot of public private work, public private initiatives that funded research. And all of that is creating data. Mm -hmm. And equally, it means that the breadth of data is growing, but also mm -hmm. research hardly doesn't always is very rare in happening in just one organization. It's collaborations. Yeah. And that's even more important for managing data and managing yeah. that I'm calling X with this identifier yeah. and I'm giving it to you to, to work on. That mm -hmm. identifier is going to live with that uh, asset, that uh, entity, yeah. for its life cycle. 
So well, and the UIDs of the individual researchers on it too, right? Because that, that adds a chain of custody of who's doing what with it. The, the sort of the beginnings was, yes, they came up with the what were called the fair principles. And it's mm -hmm. almost like a, it's a charter of 15 mm -hmm. principles, each mm -hmm. number of principles against each of those, the F, the A, the I and the R. And you, you already mentioned the one about interoperability. And, and that in a way is when it's, one way we like to think about is that the F and the A are sort of manageable in, in mm -hmm. we'll, we can come into details later if, 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 if you want. But the interoperable bit is when it starts to get hard, as we've been yes. saying, because <laughs> you, you mentioned ontologies. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the, the fact is that there are many ontologies and many more will be created uh, in the future. But if Just anything... Just go to BioPortal and see how many yeah, are out there now. <laughs> absolutely. And then, you know, equally... There are uh, ones that people need to create more internally because mm -hmm. of you know that they've gone beyond what they found in the public yeah. domain, or they're doing something which is particularly IP sensitive, and so they have to create mm -hmm. their own sort of hybrid ontology. And then there's just ones you know people often just create one for for the sake of it, perhaps. Yeah. But that interoperability of, of, is really critical to yeah. support what you were saying about knowledge graphs because mm -hmm. that ability to map between you know, let's say mesh and snowmed, some yep. more, more sort of, you know, health orientated ontologies or equally ones that are used earlier on in research. That's critical to both have the, those principles of an identify, you know, this this purpose of, of fair data should applies not just to the data, but to the metadata itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so it's just as important for the for the ontologies to be suitably uh, marked up in this way with an identifier, a label, and 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 suitable sort of nomenclature because that helps it then the, the data that the, the, the describing data the metadata can then be used in in any downstream processing or analysis or model building as as you said earlier yeah it's the provenance right a absolutely i mean so there's some great initiatives in that sort of later stage world with odyssey which, which mm -hmm. is a, a fantastic initiative where really their purpose is to be able to map on the left hand side you know lots of different data sources but to to map them to a common object common model you know that that common mapping is critical really to how the purpose of odyssey is an attempt to allow you to from different sort of health records to bring data together under a common set of of, of terms mm -hmm. and it, it spends a lot of time doing that mapping in, in a tool like atlas and, and mm -hmm. some other of the tools that they've developed in that group and, and although you know and, and fair is really fundamental to to what they're doing because out of that means that you you've done the mapping so you know you might have collected it under mesh or icd10 mm -hmm. but actually you're, you're you're presenting it back out into in a common common exactly. standard yep. and that so much makes it easier to mm -hmm. then look across data sets which have, could have come from different research groups mm -hmm. and and been done in different ways or different hospitals but that gives you that common language and and, and I don't certainly life science is no way perfect you, you know yeah we, it's, it, it's, right. a, it's a continued battle but partly because of again partly to do with how the data is captured and I think that's a a critical bit for fair that there's mm -hmm. you know people have coined the term sort of fair born fair mm -hmm. which, which mm -hmm. the which is you know i think we as you know because although people have been doing fair for a long time it just perhaps has been branded this way mm -hmm. but the, the purpose of whenever you're perhaps finding new data one has got the choice of doing uh, put, drawing a line in the sand and saying, okay, everything before this date is historical or, or mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be as rigorous as I was, mm -hmm. as I will be going forward. Mm -hmm. And I think this is the dilemma we have a little bit in life science because we've got, we've collected loads of data up to this point. Yeah, Some of it's good, some of it's less useful. Mm -hmm. and, and that's been shown in, in terms of the general reproducibility of science you know there's been some sort of papers or ana analysis done to mm. show that you know our, our science isn't always reproducible for their yeah. and, and hopefully capturing more data about an experiment will, will allow people to know whether whether they can reproduce or whether they are reproducing it yeah. that, that's the critical yeah. bit and, and that challenge exists in in, in terms of the, the the sort of the challenge that we have in terms of reproducibility but but also that you know as we as we tr we, we think about data today we want to make data born fair and that means that yeah. the tools that we're using to capture it 
have to be more semantically enriched and must right. be yeah. using the ontologies as best we can and mm -hmm. and reduce the amount of free text entry so that when someone puts an entry in for say the protein or yeah. the target they're not just free text entries they really are pointing to the the ontology just like you and and i think that's particularly the problem with with health records is that they're not always a lot of it will be direct from the doctor's notes yeah. which yeah. will not be done in a way that's particularly semantically enriched from yeah. from day one and that can yeah. cause a real problem uh, downstream about you know we 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 do collect a lot of data i mean one of the one of the problems perhaps more generally in in probably all of science is that we tend to only report the positives you know people mm -hmm. You know, people tend to not be able to report right papers about negatives necessarily. And that's another challenge that if we had mm. more sort of automated ways of capturing data, it would allow us to both capture the, the successful react mm -hmm. uh, experiments with the appropriate metadata. Mm -hmm. But also it would in, in, in doing that, we would be automatically capturing the, t the times when it wasn't it hasn't worked, mm -hmm. because, again, that the knowing the. Uh, that being able to capture everything is much is going to be far more valuable in the future because at the moment probably the models that we are building particularly with you know the, the buzzwords around AI and machine yeah. learning they're mostly built on successful things because yes. there isn't the data on the unsuccessful things yeah and the more that we can capture sort of fair level data on a, on, on the breadth of science breadth of any mm -hmm. well any any discipline it will make those models much, hopefully, much better quality because it will see the full breadth. Yeah, and and, and it, I think you know one of the first things people say about fair is it, it's a journey in the sense that yep. uh, you know the, the the principles that were written can seem like tablets of stone, and, <laughs> and that they 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 tell people or their their purpose was to inform about the sort of the best practice, the principles. I think what what the industry has been going through over this last, particularly last five years, is working out well how do we adopt fair, you exactly. know, both within our organisation, uh, between organisations, mm -hmm. and then all these challenges that I mentioned about, you know, how far back do we go? So do yes. we do retrospective mm -hmm. verification? Mm -hmm. How can we be be better at prospective? So this fair at birth process, yeah. and then the general, uh, I suppose, both the the tooling you know the, the tools that we need the software that we need but also the general awareness that need the culture change because none of this is going to be possible without change management the the, the, the sort of leadership of many organizations have embraced the importance of data and many leaders have, have talked about that you know not ju just in in life science but much much more broadly and then obviously some some companies are much more focused on data than you know for pharma it's it's not just about the data. It's about obviously, you know, helping the patients. But data is a key element of that right yes. through from early research all the way through to what the patient expects and, yeah. and, and the wider sort of, uh, as we talked about, sort of electronic health records and that feedback loop uh, that we have. But I think the change management and, and I think one thing we find in all our projects is the ability to do smaller projects to start mm -hmm. with, to try and show some of that value because exactly. it can seem mm -hmm. daunting, partly because that fair is easy to say and very hard, <laughs> harder to do. Right. That that that, that p p the approach of trying to run a pilot, which is or POC, which is related to something that's important, but you can scope it. And, and not feel that you're having to boil the ocean of your mm -hmm. company's data, but you can just hone in on a particular bit and hone in based on some of the, you know, the, the findable bit, the accessible bit, mm -hmm. the interoperable bit. And in a way, if you do those three, the F, the A and the I, the, the R bit sort of comes a little bit for free. Yeah. Yes, some bits of R about reusability apply to licensing. Uh, but equally apply to some, you know, you'll get other benefits. But I yeah. think if you do the F, the A and the I right, then hopefully the reusability comes for a degree. I of, love of, that. Of... Well, fantastic. Thank you, Nick. And, you know, for those that don't know Nick, go find him on LinkedIn. And we're going to have lots of links down below, including how you can get a hold of Nick. And if you want to talk to him about more on, on Fair Principles.